Hi everyone, this video will give you a brief overview of the types of antidepressants. So I'll be mainly talking about tricyclics, SSRIs, SNRIs, NASSAs and MAOIs. So starting with tricyclic antidepressants, your examples include amitriptyline, dosilepin and comipramine. The mechanism of action is mainly the block of 5-HT and sodium transporters and this is done to increase the amount of serotonin and noradrenaline concentration in the cleft, preventing their breakdown and increasing the stimulation of the serotonin and noradrenaline receptors. There are some side effects which you should be aware of which can often come up in exams. The main muscarinic and cholinergic side effects can be remembered using the mnemonic can't see, can't pee, can't spit, and can't shit. And it basically means the patients can have blurry vision, urinary retention, dry mouth, and they're constipated. Next, you can have histaminergic side effects due to the blockage of histamine receptors, and that mainly causes weight gain, but it can also cause sedation. And lastly, you can get alpha-1 adrenergic blocks, which can cause postural hypertension, which is a key thing to be aware of, especially in elderly patients. The contraindications include a recent MI, arrhythmias, mania, and a risk of overdosing, as tricyclic overdose is very bad for the heart and can cause severe damage. And therefore, I shouldn't be giving to patients who you think could be at risk of overdosing the medication. Next, probably one of the most common antidepressants, uh, SSRIs or serotonin selective free uptake inhibitors. Some of the common examples include sertraline, fluoxetine and citalopram. And the mechanism of action is the block um, of the free uptake of serotonin, again, to increase the amount of it in the synaptic cleft. The important side effects to be aware of, um, the 5-HD3 receptor can cause nausea, headache, as well as GI upset, whereas the 5-HD2 receptor block can cause agitation, sexual dysfunction, and insomnia. Some important notes and some of the contraindications. Sertraline is the best SR SSRI to use after someone has had an MI. And citalopram is most likely to cause QT prolongation and therefore you should do an ECG before you start someone on it. And some of the contraindications include mania and poorly controlled epilepsy. Additionally, fluoxetine seems to be the SSRI of choice for those starting one under the age of 18. Now, SNRIs are serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors some of the examples include duloxetine and venlafaxine. The mechanism of action is similar to tricyclics. They block the reuptake of serotonin and noradrenaline. The side effect profile is quite similar to SSRIs. However, some of the um, contraindications include head disease, especially cardiovascular disease, for example, uh, previous vascular strokes. Um, vascular disease or strokes, sorry, uh, as well as high blood pressure. And before starting a patient or an, on an SNRI, you should test the blood pressure um, and also at every dose titration, as again, they can increase the blood pressure in a patient. Most importantly for SSRIs and SNRIs, you should continue the medication for at least six months after the symptoms of depression have completely subsided in order for them to be effective. Next class of antidepressants are the monoamine oxidase inhibitors and the examples include rosagiline and selegiline as well as phenylzine. The mechanism of action is the irreversible block of monoamine oxidase A and B enzymes and this prevents the breakdown of norepinephrine, serotonin and dopamine which overall increases the concentration of, of all three in the brain. Some of the important side effects is amine accumulation, uh, which is caused by the irreversible monoamine oxidase A and B blockage, and that can lead to a hypertensive crisis. 
The contraindications to be aware of are severe liver impairment, cardiovascular disease, and uncontrolled hypertension. The last class I would like to talk about are the noradrenergic and specific serotonergic antidepressants, such as metazapine and aptazapine, which, as name suggests, block the noradrenergic and serotonergic receptors. The main side effect profile is very similar to SSRIs and SNRIs, with nausea, headaches, sexual dysfunction, insomnia, and weight gain. This was a very brief overview of the different types of antidepressants. If you have any questions about any of these types, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Other than that, I hope it was a useful video, and thank you so much for watching.